All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to our class. I hope you enjoyed Mark Grabowski and his top 15 AP style rules. Uh, that was video number eight. Welcome to video number nine. Uh, this presentation, we're gonna tap deeper into datelines, states and cities and answer that burning question that you all have. Uh, and that is what exactly is a dateline? Uh, so I'm gonna get to my uh, PowerPoint and I got some other things to share with you. And as I pull that up, I'll let you know that again, I am working on two computers. So I'm not always gonna be looking at the camera. So in the past, a dateline indicated two things to readers, the city in which a reporter would file a story and the date that the story was actually filed. It looked something like this. Here you've got the city, Moscow in this case, and the date it was filed. But AP style no longer uses the dateline anymore because periodicals did away with them many years ago to avoid confusion. It used to be that when a story was written, the word today or yesterday was often part of the text. But if a story that happened on a Monday was written that afternoon for the uh, publication on Tuesday, the next morning, that was no longer accurate. Act today was no longer accurate. And because the story was actually filed on Monday, using yesterday would indicate that the story happened on Sunday. So to avoid all of that confusion, the dates are gone. And AP style now mandates that writers and reporters use the specific day of the week within a story. So to recap this, periodicals drop the date from date lines to avoid confusion. Today's date lines indicate only from where the reporter monitored and wrote the story. AP style no longer accepts today and yesterday, or even tomorrow for that matter, instead write the exact day of an event. Here's, what, here's an example of what a dateline actually looks like now. Um, as you can see in this uh, one here from the Washington, uh, New York uh, Times, the uh, city of Washington, Washington, Washington DC, stands alone by itself and it is in all uppercase letters. When you're writing a story and filing it from overseas, typically you use the name of the city and the country. Now here's a story uh, in the uh, Houston Chronicle, again more local, and you've got uh, a story that was filed in Oxford, Mississippi, and so the dateline the city of the city uh, reads like this, the city in all caps, comma, and then Mississippi is abbreviated. As I said earlier these days, datelines indicate where the story was filed, but some newspapers, some will use a dateline to indicate where a story actually took place. But indicating where the story was filed is actually more accurate because it tells the reader whether the reporter was actually on site or merely you know, sitting uh, in the newsroom monitoring the story from his or her hometown. So it's a lot more transparent to do it that way. Now, locally, let's say you're in Manhattan, Kansas and reporting for the Mercury newspaper on a story that's happening in Kansas City, Missouri. The dateline should actually indicate Manhattan. That's because the location from where you monitored and wrote the story is in Manhattan. And it would look like this. Uppercase for the city, abbreviation, for the state. Now let's say you report for the Mercury and you flew to New York City, if they had the money to send you, uh, and remotely submitted your story from there. The dateline would actually then look like this, New York. Now let's say you're in Manhattan, Kansas, and you write a story, you know, about a story that happens in Manhattan, Kansas. For that, you don't need a dateline at all. Now, to see all of the detailed rules, let's go to the AP style book. I want you to pause the video and open your hard copy or online AP style book and look up uh, or type into the search bar the word dateline, okay? And then resume the video. And while you are doing that, I'm going to pull up uh, online 
uh, my AP style book. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen while you pause. And I'm going to get out of the PowerPoint. And I am going to pull this up. And I am going to get rid of this, go back here, share my screen, and pull up the associated style book. OK, here I am. All right, and you should be back. All right, so let's talk about this. To see all the detailed rules, uh, you're going to, again, need to go to the AP style book. All right, so you're going to be responsible for that. Um, but here are some of the key rules for using a datelines. All right, I've got datelines here, as you can see, datelines. All right. And also make sure in the uh, on the right side that you go to the AP style book, not the custom notes. Sometimes when you do this by default, custom notes comes up. Go to the AP style book. There you go, just like that. All right. So here's the some of the key rules. First of all, when writing a dateline, use uppercase letters for all the names of cities. For certain major cities, you don't include the state in a dateline. And to see these exceptions, just click on the subheading datelines, which is right here. Click on that and you'll see this list of cities. For these particular cities, you do not need to include the state in which they exist, all right? Okay, now when you are including the state, you always need to abbreviate. So for that, I'm gonna go back here all right, to date lines. And uh, what I'm going to do is um, go into, you can see what I'm doing here, into state names. All right, state names will come up. And again, I want my AP style book, not the custom notes. I go into state names. And Click on state names, all right, and scroll down a little bit, and you will see a list of all the states, okay, all the states. And what you'll notice is that each state has uh, two different abbreviations. One is in parentheses, and the other abbreviation is not. The abbreviation in parentheses typically just has two letters. And those are US postal codes. And we never, ever use this in AP style. Always, always use the abbreviation that is not in parentheses. Now, in the book, in the AP style book, for this, you look up under S's, go to states, and you will state names, and you will see the full list here. Right. And now there are also certain cities that don't get abbreviated at all. Uh, and these are, are written out for you down here. Uh, so just kind of, you know, take a look at these. It's very important. And remember, do not use postal codes ever. OK. Um, now, the other thing you want to do after that is I want you to take a look and type into the search bar, you can type in uh, city. All right, watch this come up. Okay, and I'm going to go to the AP style, not the custom notes. And what happens here is if you're looking for names of cities uh, all over the country, like this huge a comprehensive list of names of cities, you're not going to have that in the AP style book. It just doesn't exist. There'll be some, uh, you know, a few things like, Kansas City, you know, or Iraq, uh, certain things will will come up. Oklahoma City, because they might have special treatments, uh, but otherwise you're not going to find that. Instead, in the AP style book, it's just going to tell you how to treat the word city and the word cities plural uh, when you use it in your writing. Okay. Um, okay. So for today. You know, grow familiar with date lines, states, and cities in the AP style book. Very important, and you are you're going to be quizzed on it. But uh, I want to also go back to uh, date lines for just a second. 
um, and go to my AP style book. All right. And I'm going to see if I can find it down here. Um, if I can't find it down here, I'll tell you at least where it is in the AP style book in the hard copy. If you go back into Datelines, maybe I have to click on Datelines again and see if it's down in here. Yes, here it is. Uh, look up under the subheading Datelines, go to Within Stories. This is very, very important because this will actually teach you the rules for writing a city and state in the body of a news story. And here's a summary of those rules. And to do that also, I'm going to stop sharing and go back to the PowerPoint as well. And uh, pull the PowerPoint back up and get back into slideshow mode. I'm going to share my screen. Share screen, PowerPoint, slideshow mode. Thanks for being patient with me as I go through all of this. Uh, we already looked at this. All right. And then again, here are all the state names. They're also here in the PowerPoint as a reminder in case you want to look up the PowerPoint as well, if you can't find it in the book. All right. And OK, so let's say you have a date line with a city and state like here, Miami, Ohio. So not Miami, Florida. We're talking about Miami. Ohio. And you need to write the city name in the story. Then you do not need to include the state in that situation. Okay, as in this example, right here, at least 500 commuters will need to find uh, find alternate ways to get to work Friday if Miami DOT seems to vote to strike. And there, of course, is a typo. And so you know what to do when there's a typo, right? We annotate and we draw and we delete the word just like that, All right? Okay, there you go. Bringing things together here. Okay. All right. We'll clear this and get rid of that. Okay. Um, but if you need to use the, another city, uh, you know, that sounds the same, but it's in a different state, then you write out the full state. Local resident John Smith said, if the Teamsters do strike, he will move to Miami. So here we go again. We annotate if the steam Teamsters insert text. Some online editing there. There you go. He will move to Florida. There we go. There's an example of what we're talking about, how to edit. Clear all that. And there we go. All right. Now, uh, let's say uh, you have something like this. Los Angeles. Uh, for some major cities, all right, the same dateline rule apply, uh, applies. All right. For, again, first of all, you you don't need California in the date line in, when you're using Los Angeles. Here, you have at least 500 runners in Boston collapsed during a heat wave over the weekend. So what this tells me is that the writer reporter filed the story from Los Angeles, but writing about a race that took place in Boston. So that means the writer reporter was not there, but Boston Boston, in this case, is one of those exceptions where in the body of the story, you don't need to include Massachusetts. Okay, Boston can stand on its own. All right. Now, let's say in this example, a story has no date line at all. In that case, always use a city and state in the body of the story. Unless, unless it's a standalone city like Boston and would cause no confusion, okay? Uh, at least 500 runners in Boston collapsed during a heat wave over the weekend, that's okay. Two of the runners live in Kansas City, Kansas, as opposed to Kansas City, Missouri. Now, unlike the dateline where you abbreviate the state in the body, 
and the body of the story first mentioned, you abbreviate, you, uh, you spell out the entire word of the state, okay, if there is no dateline, all right? So those are the rules for dateline states and cities. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen here, all right? Uh, today I'm assigning you assignment number four. You need to submit a practice sheet worth 10 points. I will point out any errors by Wednesday. Uh, late submissions earn a zero. Look in the week module two on Canvas, can in Canvas for the PDF. On Thursday, you will have two quizzes on date lines, states, and cities. One is a short multiple choice uh, quiz worth 10 points, and the other is a 20 point quiz that you will need to complete manually. You'll have to print that out. You'll see it in the module. But it's all open book. And now we're going to move on to video number 10 to learn about time references. Now, speaking of time, remember to manage yours carefully because there's a lot we're learning this week because it's really the equivalent of two weeks. And then you'll have quizzes on time due on Friday. So let's keep moving and I will see you there.